Hey guys, it's Dave again back here. Dave's Dimension back again for another video. So today, we got a little bit of fun. Well, it's going to be fun for me. Um, we're doing some unboxings. Now, uh, there's a toy company called NECA, N-E-C-A. They make a lot of movie accurate collectible figures. Most noticeably, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 1990 movie. Uh, they've made these awesome perfect representations of them i mean it looks like literally you had these seven inch scale uh figures from teenage mutant ninja turtles they've done terminator they've done um the original it the updated it recently aliens predator terminator i mean the list goes on and on army of darkness evil dead literally too numerous to name you can check out their store, NECAstore.com. Definitely worth a, worth a look. They recently took on the challenge of one of my favorite movie franchises of all time. Not Ghostbusters. Ghostbusters is, right now, the rights are with Hasbro and previously with Diamond Select. Um, so, what I am talking about is Back to the Future. Those that don't know what Back to the Future is, quick breakdown. The original Back to the Future movie was about a teenager, Marty McFly. Things never seemed to ever go right, whether at school or at work. He was always late for everything. Never on time. And then finally he found himself out of time, which was the taglines from the movies and teasers. Um, he is friends with a scientist a little, a little bit of a wild eye crazy kind of scientist but a, but a good guy named doc brown doc brown is notorious for making all these home inventions that obviously he's a guy who's got a love for science well he finally achieves his lifelong dream and asks marty to come by with the video camera so they can record it <clears throat> Well, Marty shows up on his skateboard. He's got Doc's video camera. And what do we see? We see Doc's long kind of cargo van, kind of a thing, a cargo truck. And he backs out of it in a 1980s DeLorean, which was a sports car of that era that people fell in love with, but was also notorious for having defects. He backs out of it, and he's got these big exhaust vents on the back. And this weird kind of nuclear chamber on the back part of the vehicle. He comes out of it, you know, tells Marty, okay, I want you to start rolling the camera. And they roll it. He built a time machine out of a DeLorean. When the car hits 88 miles per hour, time circuits are activated. And if there's fuel inside the time machine components that vehicle will then travel to the destination time well what happens is turns out that it is nuclear doc uses plutonium to generate the necessary 1.21 gigawatts of power to fuel the time circuits and allow the vehicle to time travel well turns out that he stole the, stole it from some terrorists those terrorists show up and they shoot doc they're chasing Marty. Marty jumps into the DeLorean and while Doc was previously explaining how the time machine works, he had entered the date of when he got the inspiration for the flux capacitor, which is the heart of the time machine itself. 1955. So Marty is trying to outrun these terrorists, hits 90, hits the 88 miles per hour, and poof. He finds himself in November of 1955. Uh, while he's stuck in the past with no additional plutonium to power the time machine to get back, he finds the dock of that time. But before he does, he runs into his parents and accidentally intervenes with how they were supposed to meet. So now, before Doc can get Marty back to the future... Yes, the title of the movie, yes. Um, 
he has to now play matchmaker for his parents. Otherwise, he will never have been born and poof, erased from existence. It's a, it's a Steven Spielberg production with Robert Zemeckis, Bob Gale. It's a fantastic 80s movie. If you've never watched Back to the Future, that's your homework. Watch Back to the Future. Um, you, I swear, if you watch Back to the Future, the first one, you'll want to watch the second and the third. In my opinion, I love all three movies. The first one and the third one are two of my favorites. Now, NECA decided with this year being the 35th anniversary of Back to the Future. And it's kind of ironic. Last year was the 35th anniversary of Ghostbusters, one of my favorites of all time. And now, here we are. This year is the 35th anniversary of Back to the Future. Now, I have a few different pieces to go over today. <clears throat> I don't have all the figures coming out. I don't have all of them yet. I'm getting the other two. There's a, a version of Marty in his radioactive suit. Um, there's a version of Marty in his 1985's denim clothes with his uh, vest. And also 19, or 2015 Marty. Those two are coming next, uh, coming this week. But this week I have... Now see, it says Tales from Space because this was the comic book a young boy in 1955 is holding when Marty lands in 1955 crashing into a barn. And I have plans for this. I'm not going to keep the box. I'm one of those out-of-box collectors. But we got Marty in his plutonium suit, his protective suit, with plenty of accessories. So you got different heads you can use. They got the little back, dra back draping of the hood that goes on the back of the, the one that he's wearing right now. You also have the full mask in here. And I love this because this is the part where he sneaks into his father's house to scare his father into asking his mother out to the enchantment under the sea, under the sea dance. But what he does is he has a hair dryer from Doc's luggage, which was inside the DeLorean, aims it like it's a ray gun. He's got a Walkman in his other hand. A walk And those, if you're a younger millennial and you don't know what a Walkman is, back in the 80s and even in early 90s, we didn't have MP3 players. We had what we call Walkmans, which was a handheld radio that we would clip on our belt or put in our pocket, and we had headphones um, that we would wire them into. There was no Bluetooth. There was no cell phones back then. And we would have audio cassettes. Think of it as if you've ever seen a Nintendo cartridge or, you know, think of a CD. Think of a CD, but in its own little encasement, about the size of a, maybe a little bit bigger than a credit card. And you could fit about 45 minutes of music on one side, flip it over, you had 45 minutes of music on the other side. It had tape inside. That's how we were recording our music, okay? So, yes, I can't believe I actually had to explain what a Walkman is. Um, but he uses the Walkman, and he's got tons of instrumental, um, in other words, no words, Van Halen music. And the cassette is even uh, labeled Eddie Van Halen. And, you know, much, you know, moment of silence for Eddie Van Halen. We lost him this week. Today's date is October 11th of 2020. Uh, Eddie Van Halen, pretty much the heart of the rock band Van Halen, passed away this past week. He was suffering from cancer, so and he's no longer suffering. So uh, thoughts and prayers go out to all his fans and family out there. Um, so he kind of has a cameo in a way, well, his music does, because it bit of music that they actually used in Back to the Future for the Van Halen uh, Walkman part. That's an original, just Eddie just goofing around recording some, some riffs. So that's kind of his way of being immortalized in Back to the Future. So we got this Marty. And yeah, he's got the shock look on here. Um, the only criticisms I would say about as far as the mold and sculpts of 
of Michael J. Fox. It looks like they put a bunch of makeup on him. But I mean, other than that, I mean, it's pretty spot on. I'm going to open this up in just a few moments. Uh, but I wanted to show you the other one. Now, this is technically a Back to the Future 2 figure. This is not Marty. It does have Gray's Sports Almanac. And part two, this is a big plot point. So anyone who's not seen it, I'm not going to give it away. 1955 Biff Tannen. Biff is the bully of the series. Excuse me, guys. Hiccups. He's the bully of the series. Played flawlessly by Tom Wilson, who, I mean, for lack of better wording, he's... He is Biff. He is the antagonist in all three movies. I say all three movies. The third one, when they wind up going to the Old West, they meet an ancestor of Biff Tannen named Mad Dog Tannen. So, um, but, I mean, the look on him, I mean, they really nailed Tom Wilson's face there. Uh, this one, I mean, they nailed his clothes. Everything looks perfect here. Um, you got a little a little safe here, it looks like. A case for him to keep the certain things safe. They got a flyer from the Saturday Night Dance and his little receipt from getting his car repaired after uh, it got in a little accident with a manure truck. Watch part one, you'll know what I mean. Uh, but also, we get a little sports almanac here. So, I mean... NECA does some amazing work, so there's this. Like I said, I'm going to open up those two. But I also picked up their version of the DeLorean, which is a good size DeLorean here. It's got some weight to it. Um, I haven't opened any of these up yet. The only gripe I have is, if you look really close, the bar, this is actually called a flux bar. The metal stripping that goes along here. That helps create the time field so the car can uh, travel through time. They didn't do a whole lot of paint. App they didn't do a paint application on here. This looks all gray. Um, I'm probably at a later date going to tape that up and do some paints. Uh, so I can give it more of a real Back to the Future look. Now, we're going to do this after the unboxing of the figures, guys, okay? So, and just to show you what a big Back to the Future fan I am, I have some of the license plates here because I was making a repair to, I have a picture of me and Christopher Lloyd from Niagara Falls Comic Con a couple years ago. Uh, that's me when I first suited up, first time I tried to suit up. I was a time-traveling Ghostbuster with, uh, if you've seen my channel before, you've seen me talk about a Flux Pack. It's a Back to the Future mashup of a Proton Pack and the DeLorean. But as you can see, the DeLorean has this little silver bar around the bumper and also on the back, but I'm covering that. That is what's called a Flux Bar. That's when the DeLorean gets up to 88, that starts to glow creating the field around the car, so when the car actually hits 88 miles per hour, it breaks through the time barrier and travels either backwards or forwards in time. So this kind of got damaged a little bit, so I'm going to put my license plates here and here, because I had this standing up with the picture up here, and I had two comic books. The comic books got damaged when the whole frame came crashing down. So I'm going to reorganize this where I have the out of time license plate and then back to future license plates. And what I'm thinking guys is I might actually, since I'm on one of those open box people, I may actually cut this off and use this and the sports almanac and put that in the frame with it. It's a creative idea. I haven't done it yet, but I'm thinking about it. So now let's get to the nitty gritty. We are going to open this up now. I got these, these figures have been spotted in the wild, different parts of the country, in Walmart. I scored these at Target. Now, I'm actually in Grand Island, New York, which is just a few minutes away from both Buffalo, New York, and Niagara Falls, New York. 
I went to the Niagara Falls Target and I got these. These were on sale for $29.99. I do kind of like the decal of the 35th anniversary here. It's present on both. So we are going to open up Marty. Now they label these as Ultimate Marty. Oh, well, you have about three diff different Ultimate Marty's right now. Doc Brown doesn't come out till next month. So, with the way that this has been, I probably won't get Doc until the end of November or early December because it's literally taken that much time for these to get out to the Northeast. So, this slides right out. I do like they have a nice little backdrop here of the barn that Marty crashes the DeLorean inside. Um, it doesn't seem to want to come out. So I'll probably just leave that there. But this is a very awesome box. It shows the different looks that you can do. And also the figures. It just shows the four right there. And of course the fun part is always getting these plastic ribbons right off. Fortunately, this is supposed to just untie, kind of like a twist tie on your bag of bread. So this slides right out. <clears throat> Again, they repeat the same process with his legs. Now, unfortunately, I'm looking at the sneakers. Um, they kind of do not shout Nike, so obviously, I'm sure Nike, the reason for that is Nike would have asked for a lot of money for the marketing. If if, if Nike wanted to use the uh, Nike swoosh that Marty has on his sneakers. This figure looks awesome. I mean, you pick it up, I mean, the bag, I mean, the suit itself. It's supposed to be like, you know, like you're kind of like a painter suit, but protective air-wise, so you're not getting radiation. I mean, you can squeeze this, guys. This is nice and puffy, so it gives that realistic look. Now, the lower part of his torso is not. This is all thick, mold, plastic. Now, this is what, I mean, this is what I'm talking about as far as the Nikes. You just see a little line going straight up. I mean, that's kind of an easy fix. If you're good enough with paints, you can kind of swoosh it. Or maybe, uh, I actually have a red Sharpie, so that's actually something else I could do. Um, this comes right down to cover up his face. Nice little tinted shield. I mean, when Marty has the shield up, that's kind of like how it's supposed to look when he first gets out of the, well, <clears throat> he gets out of the DeLorean. He's got this on. I mean, it's a nice, it's a slightly different color. The hood is from it. I mean, it's more matching the belt, but that's perfectly fine. That just comes right off, just like you saw that fall. Fall. There's some grooves here, so obviously it's meant to go on the helmet with the matching grooves. You put this on to kind of hold it on there. Let's check out some of the other pieces here. There's a few different parts where, different scenes where some of the plastic is backed up, and that's where... A lot of that comes from. Now, here, this one's a little different. This is just by itself. This is not meant to be opened up. This is kind of like when Marty sets the helmet down. 
in the car after he's trying to get everything off, after the car overheats. Separate hood. And we have another Marty head, so you can have Marty without it. Now, to me, right here, this look, he looks like a cross between Marty and Marty's father a little bit. But, I mean, you're going to have a little bit here and there. So, I'm putting on this hood. There we go. This looks... Pretty good right there, guys. I mean, great for the Darth Vader scene. Now for accessories. I'm going to show you guys a few accessories here. Now I will say this, the feet, his ankles, they feel real stiff. Really stiff. So posing is going to be a little interesting. I may have to rely on the leg and ball joints. Now... The way the legs are, they have more of a shin here, coming straight down. His legs are very stiff, guys. You can hear a little crunch, a little pop. So that'll be interesting. I'm going to do a little experimenting with that a little bit later. Now, for my stands, I actually go with the NECA brand stands where it's a single peg but it's a nice big wide surface there we go um just gonna have to play with him a little bit so i can get him to stay that's the thing with some of these you have to be careful with how you pose them there we go he's mostly stable because when I did it on, with the other foot, it was almost like his other foot was up in the air. So, there we go. Now, the accessories he comes with, other than the radi radiation suit. Got a little plastic covering holding the hair dryer. And it does have a nice little plain application with the plug right there, right there on there. Again, this is what he uses to scare his dad with. Now, here's a little buyer beware. Be a little caution about this. Um, this is very flimsy, guys. This is this feels rubber, but this could be string. And the headset, it's not bad. It could be a little bit bigger. But there's not a whole lot of space here. And th this is what our headsets used to look like back in the day. And they did pretty good paint application on, on that. Um, there's no peg on here. So I'm going to have to be careful... If I pose him with this, I'm going to have to try and get his hand to fit that walk, to hold that Walkman just right if I pose him with those accessories. So, with that being said, I mean, be careful. NECA does have a history in the past of some of their figures or some of the accessories with the figures breaking off. Um, I learned that the hard way with... Uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the 1990 uh, Leonardo figure. His swords broke right off the handles, and I've heard of other people having the same issue. Okay, so be careful with some of these. So this is radioactive. Uh, this is Marty in the time machine, right in the beginning of the movie, going back to 1955. This is how he is now. The head. You got nice movement on the head here. Very good. The arms 
I think it's because of the suit and the molding. The hands are good. Got a little bit of movement. It's just, it looks a bit rough when we're trying to move the elbow. I think because of the ball joints. I mean, it's, it's not bad. I mean, it could be better. I like how this is nice and easy to move. Just getting the pieces on the back here holding. Uh, that would be the only thing. Now, he does not come with extra hands in here. Very much like, uh, you know, it's unlike Biff. Biff has a couple extra hands. So we're going to take a look at the Biff figure now. I'm just going to set Marty in the back because he's a little tired. Time travel does that. <clears throat> but all in all, for, for a Back to the Future figure, I'm very pleased with that Marty. At first, I wasn't going to get that Marty. I wasn't too crazy about it, but I'm like, you know what? I'm going to get it because I'm already getting the other Martys. Why not? So now we're going to move on to Biff. A little bit of tape on here, so I will use the scissors. We are now moving on to Biff. Who's notorious for his bully lines of make like a tree and get out of here. Yeah, that's not how the saying goes. Make like a tree and leave. Um, you know, always calling someone a butthead. So here, butthead. Mm. I really like the backdrop in here, guys, actually. Backdrop's really cool. I mean, <clears throat> it, you know, maybe I'll try and figure out a way to salvage these backdrops so each character kind of has like a frame that they're kind of sitting in. So like I said, in here you get three hands. You get the little safe, like a security lock box, so you can save everything in there. And that's another plot point of part two. Uh, gray sports almanac, very shiny, like it's in a protective case. I mean, the detail on the back of here. Looks great. Barcode, a bunch of tip type text on there 50 years of sports statistics you also get another biff head in here kind of his pissed off look So he's got his receipt for the repair of his car. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to put this under a magnifying glass, see if I can actually meet, make out what everything says. Uh, and then you get the, a little poster for the enchantment under the sea dance, which in the first movie is where uh, Marty's parents kiss for the very first time, which solidified that they would get married years later and have... Marty, his brother, and his sister. Let's pull out the lock box. There's no key to it. It's just a box that is supposed to open up. I'm trying to figure it out right now. <laughs> it looks like it has a hinge here. Oh, there's a little, uh, there's like a little ring. Don't know if you guys can see that, the little silver ring. So you kind of have to like tip, tilt that so that we can open it up. And there is more. This does not come out. This is Biff's little adult magazine of the era. But you can put... Does the flyer fit in? Flyer does not fit in there. Will the receipt fit in? 
The receipt kind of fits in. But of course, the almanac fits in there nice. Close it up, it's nice and safe. They could have shortened the flyer so it fits in there so you kind of keep all your accessories together. But hey, I mean, that's it's something to be done on, on at a later time. That's something that could be modded. Okay, so, again with the little twisties, getting them off. I mean, this looks fantastic. The uh, coat is kind of flat top. A little, again, and... It looks like a little bit makeup in there, but I mean, at a distance, you look spot on. Up close, it's like uh, a little freaky. Arms are a little better on this figure. You can move it around. Like, hey, stop hassling me. That sounded more like a Randy Dangerfield than Biff. I can't do Biff's voice. Boy head. That's about the best Biff I can do. Stands pretty well on, this, on the stand here. Now, yes, he is flooding. That was the style back in the 50s. Uh, if you're not familiar with the term flooding, flooding meant your... your Pant legs were kind of above, showing your socks. Like, you know, your basement's flooded, you roll up your pant legs, that kind of a deal. That's where that comes from. But that was the style back then, guys. Believe it or not, back in the 50s. But I really like this figure. Again, this was something I wasn't too, I wasn't overly convinced about. But if you're going to get Marty, you got to get a Biff. And... The legs, the ankles have a little bit more wiggly wag, a little bit of movement. Legs move much better. See that? Better movement here, more flexibility. So what do you guys think? Pretty good? Now, I'm not going to go playing around with his hands today. Because, I mean, obviously you got you got some fists here, so he can be, like, ready to fight. Just like in the movie, you know, there's a couple scenes where him and Marty are ready to fight, so. But, uh, overall, I mean, those two figures alone, I am blown away, and I'm more than happy with it. $29.99 a piece for these at Target. They were very, I, well, they had a whole bunch, by the way. Um, so they had those, they had the DeLorean that I'm going to open up very shortly, guys. Let me just do this very quickly. Sorry, I'm getting uh, notifications here. I'm just going to mute my PC. There we go. So now we're going to open up the DeLorean. There we go. Oh, we got tape on a couple sides here. Mental note, you really never want to get blades that close. So let's do this close-handed. There we go. Now, they also had a small RC DeLorean, but the DeLorean was, like, literally that small. I'm like, no. Ouch. Tape. Now, 
Now, unfortunately, I'm trying to see if there's a scale listed here. Usually, when you get a DeLorean, you'll see like a 143, 124, 25 scale. You'll see something like that. There's no scale listing on here. I'm surprised by that. Oh, one, 116 scale. I'm sorry. So there is right on the back. And we got a little bit of writing on here. Time Machine Diecast Replica. Marty McFly and Doc Brown experience the adventure of a lifetime in an unlikely time machine as they travel to the past, present, and future, setting off a time-shattering chain of events that disrupts the space-time continuum. Now, if this was the DeLorean from Part 2, I would say that's accurate. Because in Part 1, Marty's the one that travels back and forth through time. So there's that. Doc doesn't travel until the end of the movie. Of course, I mean, that's not really that big of a spoiler considering you know that there's three movies. So obviously the inventor has to be able to time travel in his own time machine at some point. Now, at first there are some gripes. There are some gripes. NECA does not knock it out of the park every single time. However, I'll go over some criticisms in just a few moments. I'm just getting a bunch of tape off of the DeLorean so I can open up the doors and show you guys everything. Okay, now, here's the DeLorean. Now, the front kind of looks a little cartoony. I mean, in the past, you've had some little piece of clear plastic covering the lenses, so it looks like natural headlights. This looks a little cartoony here. That's, but I mean, I'm happy with the DeLorean, how it looks. Um, one thing is the flux bar is the same, almost the same gray as the rest of the vehicle here. This should be more of a silver, okay? Now, DeLorean car, the DeLorean cars from the 80s were of a silver finished vehicle. This is a small one. I got a Walmart. It's missing the, uh, mirrors. I mean, this is kind of the concept that it should look like. Silver on the flux bar. You see the front there. This, I mean, it looks a little cartoony. What I'm probably going to do is I'm probably going to take some silver paint and go over the flux bar. I'm going to tape the, you know, use some painter's tape, cover everything else up so I can paint that and do the same application again here because this should be silver. Um, the vents... Technically, the vents look black because it was, these are exhaust vents that obviously generate heat and also release cold. Um, they're more of a pewter color in here, so that's not too bad. Um, the sticker is crooked. The license plate sticker is crooked. I might take a little exacto knife and see if I can peel that off and reapply it. Um, some of the coloring on the wires could be a little bit better, but... For the most part, I mean, this is a solid first attempt. This is a solid bottom here. There's no car components underneath. The wheels do not turn or rotate like in uh, the second movie. There's a hover mode. The neck is probably going to come up with their own version of it. You know, they'll probably release a ghost, you know, a uh, DeLorean from part one, obviously, right here. DeLorean from part two and part three. So the inside, I don't know how well you guys can see, but you can see there are time circuits. In the center console, right where you would find the radio normally, you have the control. This is what turns the time circuits on. There is a small little keypad. So for the most part, this is pretty, pretty damn good, guys. The only thing that's really missing in part two, there was, or part one, when Doc in uh, 1955 needs to send Marty back, they put in a little component right here that allows a rod, kind of a hanger rod, connect to a wire so they can harness 
old bolt of lightning to send Marty back to the future. That's the only thing that's missing. And also a little uh, analog alarm clock. But, I mean, even behind the steering wheel, you can see... I don't know how well it shows up here, but you can see the regular dashboard in there. So, for the most part, it is pretty damn good. It's just uh, the gripes of using the all gray paint or plastic on here. But, like I said, I can take take some paint. I put, can put some tape on there, paint it up myself, and it should look fine. Um, paint I usually use would be like Silver Argent. I don't know if I'll use a chrome, like liquid chrome. I know a lot of people use them to restore transformer toys. Um, I'm not too sure about that. I do like that they actually spent time with the uh, rear mirrors. They put like a little gray paint. I guess, you know, because the car really is not supposed to look gray. It's supposed to look silver. Like a silver... Uh, metallic look that was how the DeLoreans look like you see how this kind of has that kind of metal finish something along those lines is really what it's supposed to be but for the most part I mean the tail lights on here are pretty good I mean this is a good size car here guys 116 scale is pretty good no, the figures will not fit in here. Um, now, here's a question. There's some cartoon-looking figures. I'm wondering if they might be able to fit in here. That's a thought. So, here's the DeLorean from NECA. And the Marty and Biff from NECA. So, what do you guys think? You think this is uh, worth it? In my opinion is it is. I mean, this Biff figure is phenomenal. Marnie with the radioactive suits. Pretty good. That kind of sh scared, crapless look. So, that is it. That is it for now, anyways. Like I said, I have the other two Martys coming in in maybe another day or two. We'll see how they turn out, and I'll release another video for that. So until next time, this is Dave from Dave's Dimension saying keep on busting, and we'll catch you on the flip side. Oh, and one more thing. If you like this video, please hit that like button. Hit that subscribe. Leave some comments in below. Are there any figures of anything that you want me to check out coming soon? Um, there's going to be another, another few docs. There's Doc from 55. There's Doc from... 2015. I don't know if they're going to do a 1985 doc. They should. The ones I'm looking forward to is if the line progresses to the point where they do Back to the Future 3. I gotta have Marty and Doc from Back to the Future 3 and I really hope that they do a DeLorean for Part 3 but that has swappable wheels for either the uh, train or for the wheels that they use to go from from that point in beginning of part three to the old west to get docked. I'll just say that. Don't want to give way too many spoilers for anyone who hasn't seen this series. So please leave your comments, suggestions in the comments section below. And like I said, until next time, keep on busting and we'll catch you on the flip side.